Greetings and salutations, I am your humble Adobe instructor, AJ Wood, and you're watching episode number 44 of I Create Content. Hey everyone, appreciate you tuning in to today's show. If you caught our last episode, we were talking about stacking or even auto stacking images inside of Adobe Lightroom. Today's tutorial is inspired by my good friend Glenn Dewis, who puts a new spin on an old Photoshop technique. Now what I like about his tutorial is it clearly demonstrates the different ways that we can all use Photoshop creatively in our workflows. So today I'm going to show you a dodge and burn technique. This is a way to create a non-destructive dodge and burn layer and it's a trick I picked up from Jack Davis. Let's go ahead and jump on in. You can see in the screen in front of you I've got a picture of my daughter and what I want to do is start by creating a new blank layer. Now I could do that by clicking on the new layer icon but the keyboard shortcut for a new blank layer is command shift N on a Mac or control shift N on a PC. So here I'm going to label this dodge and burn. I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay and then I'm going to check the box that says fill it with an overlay neutral color of 50% gray. When I click OK you can see I have this new layer and if I hide the background you'll see the gray box but notice when I turn on the background the gray box disappears. Remember I'm in the overlay blend mode and in overlay blend mode gray, 50% gray, is basically transparent. Anything that's white is going to brighten the image and anything that's black is going to darken. So the range between black and 50% gray darkens. The range between 50% gray and white is going to brighten. So I can use my brush tool and effectively dodge and burn this image. So I'll go ahead and grab my brush tool, B for brush. I'll make sure that my foreground color is white. And one of the things that I'll play around with is opacity. So remember, you can use the number keys on your keyboard. I'm going to cycle through really fast. This would be 10%, 20%, 30% opacity. And I'm just tapping the number keys on my keyboard. So I'm going to change to 50% opacity. And I'm going to zoom in on the eyes in this photograph. I'll use the left and right bracket keys to make the brush smaller and with 50% opacity I'm going to brighten the eyes in this photo. So here I go. I'm going to drop down to 30% opacity for the top and then I'll use the hand tool to move across the image and then I'll just paint again. I'm painting white at 50% opacity in the image using my number keys to go between 30 and 50 percent opacity. So that takes care of the eyes. I'll go ahead and zoom out. I'm going to move the photo for you on the screen. I'm going to grab my, boss, or grab my uh, brush tool, make it uh, right bracket a little bit bigger. And now I'll just put some highlights in the hair. Okay, back here, a little bit more highlights. And then I'll put some highlights on the side. And if I want to darken, any certain area of the photo. All I need to do is come down to my brush and I'll flip the background or the foreground color to black. I can do that by hitting the flip switch or pressing X on the keyboard. So now I'm painting with black and I can darken certain areas of the photo. So maybe there's certain areas that I just want to pull, make a little darker. Okay, so I'll do that. And if I hide the background image, you can see the areas that I've painted in this little overlay blend mode. So areas right now that you see that are close to white are going to brighten. Areas that you see that are close to being black are going to darken. And of course my 50% gray is essentially transparent. If I show you the image and I turn on and off, if I toggle on and off my dodge and burn layer, this is before and then this is after. So once again, this is the before and this is the after. So that's a way to create a non-destructive dodge and burn layer. Could I use the dodge and burn tools? Yes. I could duplicate the image, use the dodge and burn tools. I could use them permanently by just dodging and burning directly on the image itself. Could I do this in Lightroom with the adjustment brush? 
Yes, but that's a different workflow. So what I want you to understand, this is the Photoshop workflow. This is a Photoshop trick, but there are several different ways, as we say, that you could skin the cat. Now, I promised or I mentioned that Glenn had a great use of this technique. I want to show you one other thing in my video, and then I'm going to give you the link to his video tutorial because it's excellent. What I want you to understand is I decided to fill this dodge and burn layer with 50% gray. I like to do that because you can see obviously where I painted. I just want to go ahead and hide this and make a second dodge and burn layer. Now once again, I'll do Command Shift N on a Mac or Control Shift N on a PC. And I'm just going to create, uh, call this DNB2, hey, no gray. Right. And what I want you to see, once again, I'll change the blend mode to overlay, but I'm not going to check the box that says fill with an overlay neutral color. I'll click OK. This is now at the top. Right. Notice that this one's not filled with a gray, but it is in the overlay mode. I just want you to understand that if I paint with white, and I'm going to set my opacity to 100%, white is still going to brighten this photo. So notice that white brightens the photo. If I turn around and paint with black, and again, I'm using 100% opacity so you can see on the screen, black is going to darken the photo. Could I retouch the photo in the same way? Yes. The reason I like to have the gray fill is it makes it easier to see where I painted. So notice here, the white practically disappears. And while the black out, uh, stands out really well, it's kind of hard to see where I painted. So I just prefer, because it's going to blend anyway, I just prefer to fill with the 50% gray. But to make that dodge and burn layer work, it's not necessary. So I just wanted to mention that as the last tip. If you're watching this on YouTube, right now on the screen, there's a pop-up that will let you go directly to Glenn's video. If you're watching this on any other player, look in the show notes and I'll put the link to Glenn's blog post in the show notes so you can watch how he used what he calls the never-ending light source. And it's really the same technique, but he didn't use it for a retouch. You've got to watch the video, check it out for yourself. So if I've helped you today, please give this video a thumbs up. As always, I appreciate it when you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I respond to the questions that you ask. Remember, you can find me on Facebook, on Twitter, on Google+, my blog, ajwood.com, or this YouTube channel. So you guys have an excellent afternoon, and I'll see you next time.